Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Non Sequitur Nerds. Tonight we need you to grab your balls and catch them all because we're talking Pokemon and that sounded much better in my head actually. Uh, Ian is joining me tonight. How you doing bud? I'm doing all right. It's uh, another evening uh, preparing for a nice long, maybe relaxing, probably not, weekend. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so things are going good. Good, good. Going good. Uh, yeah, so talking Pokemon tonight, mm -hmm. folks. Uh, Pocket Monsters, the uh, phenomena that has been around uh, oh, the States, time. anyway, since uh, 19... Let's see, when was Pokemon was Red and Blue released? Uh, 1998. 98, I was close. Was the uh, North American release. Technically, it has been around since 1996, when it was originally released in Japan. That's what I'm thinking always of. late to the game. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, luckily, like these days, with the way Nintendo does their distribution, it's pretty much date and day across the board, across the world, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, that was also back in the day when there wasn't such a thing as digital distribution. Like, right. you literally had to go and pick up a cartridge. I mean, the original Pokemon premiered on the Game Boy... Game Boy. Uh, <laughs> on the Game Boy, yeah. yeah. Uh, black and white. Um, not the, not the not game the games, black and, yeah. Not, not, not the Pokemon game black and white, but Pokemon red and blue. We're in black and white. In, premiered in black and white well, on the Game Boy. You're, 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 green and black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so, I mean, Pokemon, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, I got the game when it first came out in the States. Yep, same, uh, same. Played it, played it religiously, probably, yep. you know, quadrupled my parents' battery budget. Uh, <laughs> Dude, ga a... game, those things, like, they ate through battery. Not as bad as the Game Gear did. But like, well, yeah. But I mean, like, I think we talked about last time actually. I think we did. Yeah. Was a was a battery was a battery suck. <laughs> yeah, um, I loved it though. Yeah, uh, and that was also back in the day before really rechargeable batteries were a thing. So. Right. I mean, like you could get uh, rechargeable double A's, but I mean, back then they were so bloody expensive. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's a cat. <laughs> I, just, I just for those of you watching the YouTube stream, you just got to see a floating cat head. So hey, there's there's some incentive to watch YouTube. Cats occasionally. Yes, uh, <laughs> a lot of occasions. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yes. so uh, Pokemon, the beloved franchise that uh, premiered back in 1996 world in the world stage, I guess, uh, yep. you know, officially came out into the world, uh, really hit the rest of the world in 1998 um, outside of Japan. So um, it's been a while. It's been quite a while. Uh, One. D, so ninety plus so years. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, and it, it's still going. I mean, it's still just as strong, if not stronger, than it ever has been. Right. Still just as strong. Still just as popular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe even stronger than ever. I mean, has spawned multiple different spinoff things. Yes. Oh my you know, god. No, multiple games. There's plushies. There's toys. There's the TV anime. Series. The card games. You know. Uh, the card game, all which kinds I still of stuff. have my Pokemon cards. It's, somewhere around mine. Now. Mine are actually sitting in a box over there. Mine are in a well. My good ones are in a binder. Yeah, uh, the downstairs. And then the, re the like the dupes and the the non shinies and non hollow cards and stuff are just in like a box somewhere. Yeah, see, like minor. It's it's oh. like one of those like uh, plastic. Uh, I don't want to call it like a safe, but it has a little lock on the front of it. So right, and I've I've had yeah, that since. Man, I th I've had think I've had that thing since I started actually playing the cards. I mean, I haven't played the card game in years at this point. I don't think I ever actually played the card game. I really? just collected them. Yeah. See, I had, uh, ironically, in the you know, little Amish town here, um, in town, there was actually, there used to be for a very short while, there was a uh, collectible shop. Like, they sold Pokemon cards, Magic cards, uh, Dungeons & Dragons stuff. I mean, they were a nerd shop, which for the area you and I grew up in is really kind of odd. But they had a, a super loyal fan base. Um, but anyway, they actually were... uh, until the, until the Luddites drove them out of the, drove well, them out of the county with pitchforks. Well, what it actually was is they were they were too nice to their their clientele and kept like trying to undercut their own prices to try to keep those oh. faithful people faithful, and they ended up just losing money month after month. Even with you know oh. sa sales were booming, but they were selling it at such a low cost they they couldn't afford the rent, utility stuff like that. Unfortunately, yeah. But uh, they yeah, were actually a, to, a, a legal location. Make... Yeah. 
You have to be able to make some margin off of those those deals. But yeah. we're not here to talk business, <laughs> uh, right. folks. We are here to talk poker lovable, We're Yes, we are here to talk lovable electric rats and uh, pocket monsters uh, and, uh, you know, all that all that stuff. Um, so, uh, Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Snap uh, came out today. Yep. Uh, As of this wanna... recording, yep. Yes, if you want to date uh, when we actually did this recording, <laughs> folks. Uh, just go and, and use that magical thing called the internet and figure out when Pokemon Snap came out today. And I really uh, like it. I really like it. It is, like, I, I played the crap out of the original Pokemon Snap on the 64. And, like, mm -hmm. this is, like, canonically, it takes place in the same timeline as that. I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, it's not really a super story-intensive game. It's a game about wildlife photography. But uh, it does canonically take place in the same timeline. Um, but... I mean, obviously, it's on a much newer system, so there's not much more they can do visually. The levels are a lot more flushed out and it, more realistic than what they were in the uh, the N64 version, obviously. Uh, so far, super impressed. Like, I, I came home after getting it today, and I played it up until uh, five minutes before we recorded, and I'm like, ah, I should probably go make sure everything's set up. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm super, yeah. super happy with it. It was definitely a good purchase. Good. Yeah. I mean, I had the I had the original for the Nintendo 64 as well. I played a lot of it. Uh, for those of you that never that hadn't played it, it's very much like a game on rails, like yeah. literally a game on rails. Like literally. you are in a you're basically in a mine cart, mm -hmm. like going around these environments, taking pictures of Pokemon. Yeah. It's uh, like I said, wildlife photography. Right. And you occasionally throw stuff at them to get them to try to do things. Um which, if you think about it, a Pokemon's life is really entirely revolves around people <laughs> hucking things at them. It's Pokeballs, berries, whatever. Other Pokemon. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, like, and they do, they, they, they always seem I choose happy. you, Shuckle, yeet. <laughs> right? But they always seem happy. I mean, it's, it's, that's one of the things that always got me about Pokemon, is at the end of the day, it's about enslaving little animals and forcing them to do your bidding, fighting against somebody else's enslaved little animals. Also friendship right. or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's, I think, more of a Japanese trope. Type right. Thing. Like, the power of friendship compelled you. Yeah. Um, that, that, or that's as, an uh, one of my good, Right. Or as one of my good friends, uh, good friends refers to the game as, oh, uh, dogfighting the game. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, not too far off. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it's, 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 nice. it's, it's Pokemon. I mean, it's, it's, it was so unique when it came out. It's still, I mean, there's been other games that have tried to emulate it. And, like, some have found moderate success but i mean nothing's ever hit that that level of pokemon yeah i mean it, it, when you think of the mon type mm. creatures you think of like tamagotchis yep. even though it doesn't it's not like a mon but it, yeah. it's a pocket i mean they did have pocket you know uh gigapet versions of pokemons you mean the, this yes i mean that you dug that out just for this didn't you no no i've actually had this on my desk for like two months Oh, uh, the batteries, well, the batteries dead, and I just keep forgetting to buy one. So there you go. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I mean there were there were no, Tamagotchi's. Actually, there were... Oh, cool. So I mean, it's anybody that had one of those things. That poor creature is probably swimming in its own pool. Oh, yeah. Pikachu is so mad at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, the pocket uh, Pokemon. There's Tamagotchi's. There's uh, Gigapets. Digimon. Uh, there's Digimon. Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. The Digimon, digital monsters. Um, which I think. Personally, I think they they managed to distinguish themselves enough, yeah, uh, from Pokemon. I mean, it wasn't like a capture, it wasn't a capture type thing, you know, befriending type thing. Yeah. The anime. Uh, I mean, we grew up we grew up watching the anime. Um, now, now know, I, Chi, I, I will Taichi and his friends and or, yeah. I, now I will say, as far as when I was young, as far as the animes go, I did like the Digimon anime better than I did Pokemon, but I liked the Pokemon games better than I did the Digimon games. With right. the exception would, of what, what was it, Digi Digimon World three that we played the crap out of, yes, or three yes, or three Digimon or four, World. three or four, pretty much it was a. Uh, if any of you have ever played the Gauntlet games, it was Gauntlet with a Digimon skin over it, which I am perfectly okay with that. <laughs> well, there were two of them we played actually, because there was the one that you you had. Uh, it was almost played like a Pokemon game because you had a team of Digimon. Hmm. That you would have random encounters, right? Like it was an I, RPG type game, like where you would have a random encounter and fight. I think that like was Final Fantasy VII. I think, I think that, that was, was Pokemon World Three or Digimon World Three, and then four yeah, was Digimon. the uh, the Gauntlet style, Gauntlet yes. slash Di Diablo. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, kind of. So play that yeah, now. I, I think 
Yeah, I think Digimon really kind of separated itself. Which, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but they they remade the anime. I uh, see. I I had, I had seen that, but I haven't seen it. It's uh, it hasn't been dubbed in English yet that okay. I've seen. Yeah. So they, I mean, they've done a few things with Digimon. Mean, Digimon's had its own continuity for yeah. a while. Um, they had movies. Then they came out with the Digimon Tri, mm. uh, T R I, yeah. um, movies, which brought back the original uh kids and everything but they were like young you know teenagers young adults and it was like supposed to kind of like round out and finish that series oh that's cool and then and then they've rebooted Rebooted it and (laughs) they actually haven't really rebooted it like it kind of follows really the same storyline yeah uh the same general storyline it's just updated animations kind of updated visuals updated they did change some story elements Hmm. but it's uh it's on crunchyroll right now i'll have to check uh, it out then i i haven't gotten around to it yet yeah, I haven't gotten around to it either. I think right now they're up to like 40 episodes or something like that. On it's our not, it's not bad, yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, circling back to <laughs> the, the yellow uh, yellow electric rat. Um, <laughs> I think they technically call it mouse, electric mouse. Yeah, yep. but, um Anyway, so yeah, Pokemon uh, been going strong for God knows how many years now. Uh, how many Pokemon are there now? 850 oh, some? I, I can uh, find out real quick. Yeah, well, well, while Tim's doing that, so uh, the Pokemon games released on multiple different generations. Uh, they've released on pretty much every generation of Nintendo handheld at this point, uh, with the exception of Virtual Boy. I don't know if you really call that a handheld or not. 932 in total. All right, there you go, folks. Uh, we will soon, I'm sure, be rounding the corner uh, Man, to 1,000 Pokemon. See, I, I, uh, I went through... Who's uh... that Pokemon? I <laughs> <laughs> like, like I want, like I, like all hundred and fifty. The original hundred and fifty-one. Yes, I'm counting Mew. Like, if you show me a picture of it, I can name them. You know, the second, uh, second gens, I can name most of them. Third, fourth, you know, whatever. Like past that, it's like I can name the main ones or the common ones. And I think I just lost Ian. <laughs> Yay! Now the video's all messed up. Uh, so let me just turn that off. What in the heck? Hi, Ian. <laughs> All right. Um, that was weird. How you doing, bud? <laughs> I don't know. Discord just randomly decided to reboot itself. Well, hey, okay. Uh, yay, technical issues. But anyway, no, Um, like I was saying, like, you know, the original 151, I can name every single one of them. Yeah. But, Pat, like, once they started getting to, like, three, four, five, nine hundred. That that's a lot of po- and like like kudos to the players that have stuck through it, and literally can say they have a fully completed Pokedex. I mean that's that's some dedication right there. Yeah the um, the newest game Sword and Shield uh, that's out right now uh, as of this taping um, it doesn't have the complete Pokedex. Correct. So you can you which can... which a lot of fans were very unhappy about that. I am only happy about missing, unhappy about missing one Pokemon in particular, and that's uh, the Froakie uh, evolution line, which okay. evolves into Greninja, because right. the water dark type Pokemon is a badass, <laughs> and probably one of the best typings that, that there could have been in the game, and mm-hmm. it pisses me off that, that that one particular one is not in the game. Well, especially um, since like they had that whole arc with, with Ash uh, in the anime having a special Greninja, yep. you think that's something that they would have... You know, throw it in there somehow. Maybe as a DLC. Well, I mean, they've they've had some like special like uh, distribution event Pokemon and whatnot. I I haven't ca- uh, ca- uh, been caught up too much on that for Sword and Shield, but um, no, I, I kind of agree with. You. I mean, that's a very good typing. Typically, when when I play a game, I ninety nine percent of the time pick the Water Starter just because I usually like them. Um, yeah, I mean. I, I think when I when I very first played red or was it red or blue I th- I had red at first I picked Charmander I yeah I, I picked Charmander because I'm like oh cool this thing turns into a dragon but then after that it's been almost every time it's been the water starter yeah the water starters are generally really good mm-hmm. um, you know OG Pokemon the the starter Pokemon only had their their one typings throughout yeah. the entire thing then uh, in I think uh, Leaf. Uh, Leaf green and uh, fire red or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, they actually gave them dual, some of them dual typings. For some right. reason, Blastoise didn't get a dual type. Uh, yeah. I don't know why, but I mean, Bulbasaur, Venusaur had the uh, grass poison type, yep. and then Charizard or Char- yeah, Charizard had the water water fire type. Or I'm sorry, flying fire type. There actually is a water fire there, type. There, there um, is, which is uh, he's a steam based Pokemon, which makes perfect sense having 
a water fire typing. Right. I, like, I don't um, know why they didn't think of that beforehand. Yeah, so, you know, they started doing a lot of dual typing for uh, the starter Pokemon. Um, there were, you know, I couldn't name all the starter Pokemon. I do know that um, Rowlet, which was, I think, the Alolan. Uh, so, yeah, the, the little uh, sun the, and moon. The owl. Yeah, the, yep. the owl. It uh, it gained a ghost grass type, mm -hmm. which is also something that's rare. And it's actually one of my more favorite Pokemon. See, th um, that's one of the few non-water types I started with. Yeah, mostly because the water type in that one looks dumb as hell. <laughs> it's a it's a fairy sea lion like it's it's a fairy water type, but it looks yeah. like a goddamn uh like sea circus clown seal. fairy thingy. Right. Like I mean, uh, like there's some players that absolutely love that, which if you do, awesome. Like I just I didn't connect with that particular Pokemon. It just didn't you know, it didn't resonate with me. Yeah, and then um that, you know, Nintendo was kind of under under fire a little bit from their uh, from the fan base because they had a really bad habit of uh, doing um, fire fighting type for the the starter Pokemon. Yeah, I mean that, like, that seems to be like... like a majority. It was like a majority of the the fire types uh, at the at in at the start were fire fighting. Yeah, they, over, they... people were just like, stop, give us some variety. <laughs> Right. I mean, they they had the fox thing, which was fire psychic, because uh, right. it was supposed it was supposed to be the exact opposite of Greninja, which is dark right. water. Right. Um, and then the the grass one was grass fighting for that generation, because they were supposed yes. to be the exact opposite of opposites of each type. Right. So they were all dual type, and they were all supposed to be the the uh, the anathema of each other. Right. So um, yeah, but you know they're. <sighs> All right, what, what's your favorite favorite type? F okay, f favorite type or favorite Pokemon? We'll start with type. What's your favorite okay. type? Man, that's a tough one. It varies game to game because it really depends on what else I've got on my team at that point. Um, yeah. I don't know if I have a favorite type or, or type pair, to be honest with you, because it depends on what I've got on my team at that point. All right, I, I try, we'll, I try we'll... to be fully well-rounded. Like, if I find one Pokemon that I really, really like, my team tends to kind of be based around that, and whatever I add to it, everything else kind of melds with that, so. Yeah. What about you? Um, uh, favorite <laughs> typing. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I hold the soft spot in my heart for Steel types. Right. Because um, they were really the new, they were the first, them and Dark types were really the first new types mm -hmm. after the uh, the original OG release. Yeah, they were, Steel. yeah. Yeah, Steel and Dark were the were the first new types, mm. and um, Steel you know, was OP. I, I, I'll, I'll agree. I'll agree with that Steel Steel. I mean, because they Steel and Dark really did kind of change things up. They were the first ones to change up the formula, right? Yeah. And um, Dark type is nice because they were finally uh, there was finally a good balance for um, against uh, Psychic types, which were right. vastly overpowered. Oh in my god! Yes, the first were. gen. Like, you, you basically just have two Psychic types, and you just rule the world oh, yeah. in the first game. You, you got a Mewtwo and an Alakazam on your team in uh, Gen 1? Yeah. Yeah, don't even, don't even talk to me. <laughs> yeah, good night, Irene. Um, but, uh, so Steel is probably one of my favorite types, which leads into one of my, uh, probably my favorite Pokemon, which is Lucario, which okay. is a Steel and Fighting type. Yep. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I just, I just really like him. There like, you go. I think he's a, I think he's a good typing, he's a good, good fast fighter, well-rounded, um... I just I just like Lucario's. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your favorite Pokemon? Okay, like as far as just like favorite Pokemon in in general, I don't know why, but I've always liked Porygon. Just the concept, the design, all of his evolutions, okay. I just thought was really cool. But Eevee will always hold a special place for me, just because it's 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 Eevee. I mean, its base form is freaking adorable. Yes, and you've got so many options with Eevee. You know, you can keep it as an Eevee. You can evolve it into almost every type. There's not every typing yet. I'm, I'm still holding out for a Dragon Eevee. Um, yep. But no, Eevee has always been, like, one of my favorites. Yeah, they're they're really missing... I'm trying to think. So they're missing a Poison type. Yep. Eevee. They're missing a Steel type. Yep. A Dragon they're type. They're missing a Fighting type. Yep. They're missing the Dragon type. Yep. What else? We, let's see. We've got a fairy type. We've got a water type. Fire type. Electric type. Grass. grass. Uh, ice. 
I think that's about it. I mean, unless they wanted to go super in-depth and go with like, all right, well, here's a fighting flying type EV, which would be... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess flying I guess flying type is... Yeah, they're, yeah, they're also, yeah. Is they're uh, bug, a, bug type. Bug type, yeah, yeah, which I think would probably be really freaking creepy. <laughs> uh, I'm just imagining this, this EV mixed with a centipede just... <laughs> <laughs> I was That's thinking, some nightmare fuel it, right there. I think it, I think actually it would probably they would, it would wind up looking like a face hugger. Um. Oh my god! <laughs> well, no, think or, of, think about it. Face huggers are the EV of Pokemon, or face yep. huggers are the EV of that world because they yeah. adapt to whatever environment they're in, which is what an EV is all about—is evolution. Right. So, well, I mean, actually, uh, here, it, 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 instead, of, instead of the e instead of ears, it has like two long like antenna. Yeah. It has two long antenna and then like six eyes. Oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> that is horrible. Imagine that. I Imagine don't want that. to. I don't want to. Good, good luck going to bed. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I I have one of the like I, I bought a Build a Bear plush Eevee and it sits next to my bed. I'm not going to be able to sleep without glancing over at that thing tonight. Oh, that, Hello, that is Tim. That is horrifying. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, Ugh. um, yeah. So, steel types are one of my favorites. Um, dragon types. Just I like dragons. Well, so. yeah, it's you. And they were also one of the op most op uh, in the original game because they really only had two weaknesses in the original game. Right. Drag other dragons, which were rare, because in the original game <clears throat> there were only three dragons. Right. And Charizard is not one of them. Right, Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. They were the only dragons in the original game. Right. Um, well, then they came so, out with, with uh, fairy types are strong against dragon, right? Yeah, now. Yeah, now. now but I'm saying, like, originally they were... Right. Uh, in, in, yeah, but fairy type is the new OP uh, typing, because dude, they well, are... Dude, fairy types are so versatile, though. I mean... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're incredibly versatile, but they're also... I personally think that they're weak to the stuff that isn't represented enough mm. in the current game. Okay. So their weaknesses are poison, uh, steel. Right. And... Which is kind of weird. Well, I mean... Well, the poison makes sense, right? Because yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, the, you know, fairy, la, 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 la. You know, na poison. Nature, poison. Right. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, they're weak to steel. Uh, I'd have to look up their other other typings. I think those are the two ones that they're actually weak to. I, mm. I don't... Um, they're, for some reason, semi-resistant to fire. They like they get like a quarter resistance to fire. They don't all really right. explain it at all. Um, Me. All right, man, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, Magic. But they're just... Yeah, they're just... I, I feel like they're, they're, their weaknesses are underrepresented. Mm. Up, underrepresented. Um, is a really it's really hard for you to find like a, a pure steel type in the game right like there's only a few of them and most of the, most of the few the few of them are really not that good right um and poison types are usually paired with something that you wind up getting paired with something that's really that's almost weak against fairy type so right. you know it, you, you, it, it, yeah you, you just kind of get your butt kicked by them right so um yeah, so, where were we going with this? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, Pokemon is, you know, we we, we said it spawned many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, tons of movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, games. Uh, do you remember the uh, um, Pokemon Stadium games? Yes. Yeah, those were amazing. Yeah, it was the first real, like, 3D Pokemon game uh, released, I believe, on the N64 originally, yep. Pokemon Stadium. Mm -hmm. Uh, and one of the really cool things is what you you had that peripheral for mm -hmm. the, the controller that you could put your cartridge your game cartridges in to use your Pokemon yep. that you had trained. So of course every bastard out there would just wind up training up like a level one hundred Mewtwo and then just like try to <laughs> then just, Whoosh. yeah basically just <laughs> zoosh everything exactly. Um, uh, well, do you remember in the in the original Game Boy Pokemon Red and Blue games the uh, the um, infinite item trick? Ah oh, man, I gotta think back of all the glitches I know in those games. I, it was the one that involved missing though. Uh yes, I think so. Then, yep. Yeah, so you could, um, you could glitch the game so that in a you had to go to a particular spot mm -hmm. in the game, 
surf up and down the coast until you ran into a, a it was a glitched Pokemon called Missing No. Yep. It didn't have a it didn't it, it was missing number. Yeah. Um, but it didn't matter what you did to it, you kill it you kill it or run away, it doesn't doesn't really matter. But it would it would take every item that you had in the sixth slot of your bag. I, I think so it was a specific slot, yep. Yeah, and give you ninety nine of them. So, and you could just do this infinitely. Mm-hmm. So you could do, you know, Pokeballs or what everyone did. Which rare, candies. rare candies. Candies, yep. which <laughs> increase the level of your Pokemon by yep. one. So you just, just, oh, I want to, ta- I want to train up a, a badass team of Pokemon. <laughs> all right. I'm going to get 99 rare candies, level them all up, and then go and do it again. Yep. I remember that. It's good yeah, times. So, good times. Um, good times. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, then the, so, you know, occasionally you'd be super unlucky, and the missing note would actually glitch out your entire game and either lock it up or erase your game. Some people had that happen. Yeah, I was lucky enough to avoid that. Yeah, thankfully. same. But... Same. I didn't do it very often. I mean, there were a few different glitches involving missing no, um, but yeah, luckily I, I didn't have any game crashing bugs. Yep. Yep. So, um, you know, thinking back to the Pokemon games. Tim, besides, the main main continuity games, we're not talking about like Pokemon Stadium or Pokemon um, Snap. Or, what hey, what hey, was your you favorite? P- Let's see, there was Hey You Pikachu. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Let's go Pikachu. <laughs> Are you... Was it Let's Go Pikachu? Well, no, the, the one on yeah. the N64 with the microphone. Oh, yeah, 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 yep. yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, which I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Which came out uh, around, I think, around the same time that uh, the Dreamcast had uh, uh, Seaman, which was a very. Also, similar concept of talking to your pet, although it had Leonard Nimoy as a uh, as the narrator, which is kind of cool. But anyway, anyway, uh, enough about Sea Man. <laughs> Please, uh, <laughs> what what's your favorite game of the mainline ones? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm gonna have to give it to, to Red and Blue because I I think had I started playing Pokemon at any other point in the franchise, I don't think I would have latched onto it as much as I did. Red and Blue, I mean, literally in, in, in a very real sense, set the groundwork for that series. Yeah, no, so. I, I would concur with that. Um, I think for me, <sighs> that's a tough one. Red and Blue <laughs> definitely f- definitely ranks in there. Um, probably, probably actually would be Gold and Silver for me, though. See, like, like Gold and Silver, they weren't bad, but they weren't, they're not high up on my list. And I know I'm, I'm in the minority of that because most people, that, those series were phenomenal. I, I didn't think they were bad. They just weren't my favorite. No, that's completely fine. I'm just, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the game rankings right now of the, the game. So the OG uh, Red and, Pokemon Red and Blue sold uh, 31 million units. That's, that's a lot more um, than what is, I figured they would for a Game Boy game. Right, which was is actually the most uh, most games that or most units that uh, one of the uh, uh, sold out of this the the entire series, the entire wow. catalog. Uh, the second place is um, uh, Gold and Silver, actually, with uh, twenty three million, uh, followed by Sword and Shield with twenty two million. See, I, I figured um, I figured Sword and Shield would be up there. I didn't think they'd be number three though. They're v- so yeah. Gold and Silver is twenty three point one. Uh, Sword and Shield is twenty three point three five. So it's not. There's not even a million wow. unit difference between those two. But um, if we look at game ratings, um, there's no Metacritic uh, ratings for the first four games in the series. So Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't give you a number for those. Yeah. But uh, game rankings uh, actually ranks uh, Gold and Silver as the the highest rated of the games, which is ninety percent. Followed not, not by not surprised. Uh, which is followed by actually uh, red and blue at eighty eight percent, and it is tied with um, sun and moon at eighty eight percent. Okay, so, see, sun and moon I liked um, because they they changed up the formula quite a bit. I know a lot of people were they were upset that it didn't have uh, traditional gym battles in it and things like that. But for me, I, I thought it was it was a breath of fresh air. They were trying something new, and they weren't afraid to make that you know, the forefront of what they were trying to do in those particular games. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty standard formula for a Pokemon game, yeah, right? Like, I you mean, you walk around, you hurl balls mm-hmm. at these 
uh, poor defenseless creatures. <laughs> um, and I'm going, getting ready to sneeze, so I'm going to... Whew. All right. <sighs> Crisis avoided, <laughs> I think. Uh, so, you know, you go around tossing magic magic balls and trapping these creatures in a, you know, a small pocket dimension. Right. Um, and then shoving them literally in your pocket. It's science, Ian. It's not magic. It's, it, it's science, right. <laughs> science. Science. Um, what has science done? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of an, I mean, the same basic mechanic, but, mm. you know, they added some, they made some changes. Yeah. Um, I actually personally thought the best mechanic change they added to the games, the game series, um, out of all of them, was Mega Evolution. So, I mean, yeah, because that was cool, because it, 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 I don't want to say they stole it from Digimon, but <laughs> they stole it from Digimon. Well, I mean, Digimon had been doing Mega Evolution since all the way back in its, its inception. So right, it but took, it, it was always it like took... a, a temporary thing. They would revert back. Same with Pokemon. They do their Mega Evolution. They say that for a while, but then they revert back. Um, mm -hmm. like as far, if we're talking about like favorite changes, uh, sword and shields open world, I think is something that has been a long time oh, yeah. coming and should have been in Pokemon a lot sooner. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they just, uh, I don't know if it was just a lack of horsepower or a lack of, um, decision making. And if you, if you think about it, actually, that seems to be a, a theme for, uh, the Nintendo switch, um, era, which, uh, breath of the wild, mm -hmm. uh, was open in, world. Uh, it, it, is an open world Legend of Zelda game, and it is probably one of the greatest games that has been made in forever. a while. Yeah. Um, Sword and Shield has that mm -hmm. open world concept. The, I mean, it's still linear in the in so much as your storyline, yeah. but you can go and explore other yeah. areas, and you know, you you have the wild area, and you yep. can just go off and do whatever you want to in these areas. Right. Um, and there, it's something that they're incorporating into the next game in the series, um, Legends. Is it yeah. po Pokemon yep. Legends? Legend, Ar Legends, Arceus, Arceus. I've heard it both ways. Yeah, uh, which is actually set in like feudal era. Kind of yeah, equivalent. more ancient Pokemon times. Yeah, uh, which, which still have Pokeballs. Yeah, I, I am. Again, this this is mostly because of who I am. I'm more interested in the Legends game than I am the the other remakes they're doing. That's fair. But I mean, it's going to be it's something it's something new and different. So to me, that looks more appealing. I'm still probably going to play the remakes as well. But right. Well, uh, my only question with the the Legends game right mm -hmm. now, I mean, because all, all we saw really was like a trailer and like yeah. a very a very minimal gameplay thing. Why the hell do you have a dodge roll in that game? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's going to end up being like Monster Hunter instead of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess if you have an Onyx barreling down, you know, an 800-pound rock Pokemon, a 28-foot-long rock You're going to get out the way. Right. If they didn't want that Onyx to hit them, they'd get out the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you get the reference, then you're you're cool. You can stay. You can stick around for um, a while. So, uh, yeah, that, that mechanic didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I'll play the game and find right. out if it actually makes sense in the context of the game. Right. I don't know. Maybe you have to dodge, like, rock slides or something. Um, which, again, then there's also one of those mechanics from the original games, like, there's a shrub in your way. You can't get by it. You have to go find an HM to cut it. I, I, I just... Can I just step around it? Can I... Can I... Can I it's a shrub. Can I just climb over it? Right. Like, what am I going to? Am I worried about ripping my pants? Am I worried about? <laughs> They're briars? delicate pants, Ian. Right, my delicate, my delicate pants. Oh, <laughs> I have a Pokemon called a Sand Slash. Its entire purpose is to cut things. It is a freaking hedgehog. I have a Scyther. It literally has two giant sides for hands. Why can can you just? No, okay. I'll go get a special disc that I shove in you and makes you learn how to go. Eh. Right. Exactly. You know, strength. I, I, I literally have a four-armed Pokemon. I was say, the strength whose entire one, that made the least sense being, to me. Right. His entire shtick is being the strongest Pokemon in this particular region. Right. Why the hell can't he not shove a frickin' rock? That, ah. that, the strength one to this day boggles my mind. I mean, like you said, you know, Machamp. That's its whole shtick. Yeah. Why do I need to teach the strength Pokemon strength to lift the thing that it already knows how to lift? 
Did it forget? Did I get a, a defective Machamp? I mean, <laughs> why? Time. Machamp time. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're, you apparently got the defective one. Apparently. Um, apparently, you also have to teach the Pikachu how to use Flash. Um, uh... Even though it's an electric... Right. Um, Wrong Flash. Even... Right. Uh, well, there's also the other type of Flash, but, you know, thankfully there's no trench coats in the Pokemon yeah. universe. Or, okay, or, or you know, let's talk about teaching all the water types how to swim. Yeah, or, that too. Well, surf, it's totally different. Which, okay, right. so surf I can kind of get because you're teaching a Pokemon how to swim while carrying you. Okay, that makes sense because you can't just, you know, hop on a wild horse and it goes, I know what to do now. So that makes sense. It, more than any of the others. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if you if we really want to split hairs about some of the logistics here, like, okay, yes, you you teach your Pokemon surf. How the hell am I getting across the ocean on the back of a of a what? Goldfish. <laughs> You're right. Like Lapras makes perfect sense because it's you know a it is the fairy. It's, it is the fairy Pokemon. Yeah, it's a, it's like, a big sized Pokemon. You can do that, but all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, Oh, horsey. All right, horsey, let's go. Why is it? Oh, I think I killed it. Eh. But it learned surf. <laughs> it learned surf and then promptly drowned because of my fat ass. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Right. But P uh, Pikachu could learn surf in those special events, though. Yes, and it had a fun animation. And it did. It literally pulled out a surfboard. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of made it... Uh, or the uh, when it evolved to Raichu, it surfed on its tail. Yeah, in uh, in uh, uh, Sun and Moon. Or... No, 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 no. If you had a surfing Pikachu and you involved it to a Raichu, it would it would not pull out the surfboard. It would surf on its tail. Really? Yeah, it I, would jump I... up and it would jump up and surf on its tail, which then they made somewhat canonical when they made the the Raichu dual type in, oh, in where, where Sun, and Moon, in Sun and Moon when it was. Yeah, when it was yep. electric psychic type, so yep. then it would actually surf, surf on, on its tail. tail. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. See, I, I never I never evolved my Pikachu that learned surf. Yeah, it could um I don't know that I ever did either, but I, I definitely saw like videos of it or you know, that kind of stuff where yeah, yeah. it could it would surf on its tail. That is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh I think it was actually in uh one of the Pokemon Stadium games. It was where yeah. I actually saw it, now that I think huh. about it. Because if you get if you had if you were fighting against one or fought one or uh had one and it used surf it would surf on its tail as the water oh okay out. that's kind of cool i didn't i was um, not aware of that yeah if we kind of uh, circling the wagons back to uh, like game mechanics though i think one of the mechanics that i i dislike the most is actually from sword and shield which is the gigantamaxing well i mean they were neat looking yeah i mean except for charizard which became just fat <laughs> and angry well, I was going to say the, uh, oh, which one was it? There was one, uh, it's one of the newer Pokemon, and I can't remember his name, but it's it's a steel type that's effectively a building, and when it Gigantamaxes, it turns into a skyscraper. Oh, the, um, you're thinking of the uh, the steel dragon type. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking yeah. about. I cannot remember yeah, its name. Yeah, Dur Duraludon, I think is what it is. Maybe, I don't Something know. But, like that. but it literally turns into a skyscraper. Yeah. And it's like, my favorite, though, is uh, Trubbish and G Garbodor. Garbodor, his evolution, yeah. literally turns into a a waste site. <laughs> I mean, like you see all kinds of like trash and like just it's it's. I know it's a trash bag Pokemon, but when it Gigantamaxes, it's a a freaking junkyard, and I love it. I think that's probably one of my uh, favorite. Yeah, Gigantamax uh, although designs. creepy enough, if you if you the camera pans behind it, you can see the corpse of a Magikarp inside of it. Oh god! Oh, the skeleton. Yeah, yep. it's it's got the skeleton of a Magikarp in it, so that that's terrifying. Um, if I you mean, think about it, Pokemon die. They they do. Um, they just don't ever tell you that in the games or the the movies. Well, um, no, they they in the anime they talked about uh, eating Pokemon because there, there's they were stuck on a raft with a Magikarp. Uh, they're like, oh yeah. well, you know, well people eat Magikarp. Oh, they're too tough though. So I mean, they they, and if you think about it. There's no cows in Pokemon. There's no, you know, chickens in Pokemon. There's just Pokemon. So when you're, well, when you're eating don't... meat... I mean, the, yeah. They, um... 
it's possible that there could be those types of animals. It just we don't see them in the world. Well, I mean, it, there's there's a uh, mill tank is where they they say that's that's where we get our milk from is our mill tank. So we've established that you get these animal byproducts from the animals that you capture and fight with other animals. Right. I mean, that's fair. Um, yeah, uh, if that's also <clears throat> like nightmare fuel inducing. Yeah. Um, Sorry if we've ruined Pokemon for you kids, but you were having Pikachu tonight. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Charmander's got to go. <laughs> we can't afford groceries this week. <laughs> what do you think the tastiest Pokemon would be? <laughs> oh. Like, we're, ta we're talking like a nice cut of meat. Oh, this is a conversation talking, I never thought I'd have. If you're talking about cut of meat, that might be different. Uh, technically, the tastiest Pokemon would probably be the one that is the giant birthday cake. I mean, yeah, that's true. Because it's what literally is, what's a it birthday all, all creamy? All, all creamy, yep. Yeah, all creamy. Because it's literally, yeah, it's literally a dessert, so. Yeah, it's it's and it's a fairy type, so it's a fairy. It's, it's a, magic it's cake. A fairy, it's a magic cake, Yeah. <laughs> So literally, the, that would probably be the tastiest Pokemon. There you go. Um, tastiest cut of meat? <laughs> uh, probably the... I would have to say probably the Buffalo Pokemon. Um, you talking uh, Tauros or the newer one? No, no, there's actually a Buffalo. Yeah, one. oh... Um, I think it's like Buffalant or something Buffalant, like that. yes, yes. Yeah. Probably that one. There you go. Real bison is actually really it's tasty. It's real, real, actually really tasty, so, yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't imagine Psyduck would be something you'd have on Christmas dinner, though. Probably not. Yeah. Seems like it'd be maybe a ducklet. Oh, there you go, Peking ducklet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peking ducklet. <laughs> <laughs> That's. There's a special <laughs> circle for us, Ian. Just saying. <laughs> well, yeah, there there always was. Um, so, uh, I don't know well, how we got on that. Let us, uh, let's never know. go back to that. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So, um, we we kind of talked about the ma the main continuity games and the the different Pokemon. And uh, again, who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu. Uh, it's Jigglypuff. <laughs> um yeah then the the anime has been i haven't wa really like seriously watched it in years like, Set, I'm like not... i I've, I've seen an episode on but i haven't really sat down and watched it yeah i mean they i haven't either uh for some reason ash is the magic kid that never ages um, well, well you, you know about the fan theory friends. right yeah that he's in a coma yeah. the whole time yeah, yeah, I've heard that fan theory as well. I've also heard the fan theory that when he sees the Ho oh in the first episode, it actually, like, time locks him or something. Right, like, he, he wishes to be on his Pokemon journey forever. Yeah. So it, so it like, locks him as a kid forever. Well, and all, anybody he encounters, because nobody else ages in that either, to my knowledge. Right. Right, no, they 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 don't because they def they brought back Ash or they brought back Misty and Brock for, uh, I think, the last season. Yeah, I th yeah. Um, who are also the same age, mm -hmm. and you know, a Ash even talks about like all of the companions he's had while traveling. So it's not like uncommon. Like he has dozens of friends in the mm -hmm. world that haven't aged. Yep. I so... mean, cartoon logic. Right. I mean, we're trying to inject logic into a world <laughs> where people throw magic or uh, technol technologically science advanced balls. science balls at um, <laughs> space creatures. I mean, some of them literally are space creatures. Well, no, that's that's apparently like the the continu the the continuity is actually. Um, I think it's Arceus, right? Is yep. the god Pokemon? Like yep. it is the it is the god of the universe. Yep. It created the Pokemon, mm. and then it actually like went to another planet and brought humans to this one. So we're the aliens, technically. Yes. Well, yes. see, now I, I it thought brought that it humans. was. I thought that like humans and Pokemon at one point, like were genetically so similar, but they they diverged over time and became two different creatures. Because Mew, no, Mew, no, I mean, Mew was the first, you know, Pokemon Pokemon, which is why Mew, it's like Mew shares the uh, matching DNA with literally every other Pokemon except for like artificial ones like Porygon, um, and yeah. and what have you. 
Like, I remember watching a YouTube video a while back that tried to, based on in-game knowledge, tried to explain how Pokemon came to be and, like, what types spewed from, like, what evolutionary branches. Right. I'll, I'll send it to you later if I can find it. <laughs> Right. Uh, and uh, if you enjoy our acerbic and twisted sense of humor, what I suggest is you go out to YouTube and check out uh, the uh, dorkly videos of uh, what if Pokedex entries were literal. Oh, God. Um, because it is hilarious, yes. uh, for one. Um, and yeah, you should you should check out that series. So. <laughs> Um, shout out to her, shout out to Dorkly. They don't All give right. us any kind of endorsements, nope. nor do they know anything about us. <laughs> they, they don't um, know we exist. Pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Pokemon's got some weird continuity stuff. Yeah, it really does. Like, yeah. yeah, I think in black and white, there was some dude that could speak to Pokemon. Hmm. I think his name was just N, like literally the letter N. Yeah, that like black and white. Like, I didn't like those ones as much as the others. But I, I think it's because of the story that was tied to it. I guess I couldn't get into it. Yeah, and I, I actually, I never played Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum. Mm -hmm. Like, never played those, never played Black and White. So, like, in reality, the last Pokemon game, so I played Red, Blue, Yellow, yep. Gold, and Silver. Mm -hmm. Never played Crystal. Uh, my brother had Sapphire that I played for a little bit. Yeah. Um... Never played uh, Emerald, never played Diamond, never played Pearl, never played Platinum. I uh, didn't play Heart Gold, Soul Silver, never played Black and White. I picked up Black 2 and White, or I know I picked up White 2 mm -hmm. uh, and played White 2. Then I had X and Y. Uh, then I had Ultra Sun, or uh, sorry, I had Ultra Moon. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sword and Shield. So, like, I missed probably half of the games in the right. series if you, don't, if you don't count, like, remakes. Remakes and spinoffs. Uh, Right, remakes and spinoffs. Um, so there was a lot that I missed out on as far as like Pokemon goes. I'm not really like, oh my god, I have to go back and play those. It's like, hmm. <laughs> right. it's a fun, they're fun games, yeah, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna like go back and like try to be that kind of completionist. Now, did you uh, did you play any of the uh, the Mystery Dungeon games? No, I never did. No, I, I, I. Like, I don't think I ever beat any of them. I mean, I've played a couple of them. I don't recall the names, if that tells you anything. I didn't play them very long. Um, but I mean, they, they were, they were all right. I mean, there's definitely an audience for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I didn't really care for them that much. So that's fair. But, uh, I mean, Pokemon's one of those games that again, it's been around since 1996, yeah. but it's one of those games that I feel is going to transcend time mm -hmm. and it'll be around for a while. My I mean, kids. Yeah. Say so our kids uh, are my, playing it. Yeah. My kids play. I mean, I got them, uh, I got my son, shield for his switch and he and his sister share i mean they they share the game and right you know they, they both play and they're, they're 11 and 8 and <laughs> they've been enjoying pokemon and they've watched the cartoons they've got toys uh, when i went to japan i bought them like some pokemon toys to bring back oh, for that's them. Cool. so yeah i mean it was it, it's one of those ser series it's just going to kind of transcend time it's just going to oh, keep yeah. going so long as it keeps making money and considering that Sword sold 22.35 million copies with an 83% game rating and an 80 out of 100 on Metacritic. They're going to keep, yeah, making, gonna keep them. making them. I mean, they have not had a game fall below a 77% as really? far as game rankings go, which was yeah, so Emerald, which is also the lowest selling version of the game. Uh, not by much. Crystal was uh, Crystal was just slightly higher, but it actually had a much, uh, it had an eighty rating. See, Emerald and Crystal are ones that, like, until you had mentioned them, I had completely forgotten about those ones. I mean, in that yeah, that I'm ranking really kind of shows. Yeah, I'm not really. I, I think Crystal is um, Crystal was like a was like the mid like generation upgrade to Gold and Silver because it was like. I th think so yeah because uh, i'm pretty sure crystal because the standalone ones are always like a mid-generation upgrade right so like red and blue existed and then yellow came out right I mean, yellow was like the special pikachu edition yeah yeah uh, but like it was the mid-generation upgrade then there was gold and silver and then crystal yep. and there was ruby and sapphire and emerald right diamond and pearl platinum, platinum. yep um and then they they kind of they kind of moved away from that that method and started doing like you know, then they had Fire Red, Leaf Green, uh, Heart Gold, Sold Silver. Mm -hmm. um, I guess Black 2 and White 2 were direct sequels. Right. 
Um, X and Y actually was one of the only ones in the series that didn't get any kind of upgrade or mid mid uh, generation update. Yeah, they didn't, did they? No, because it was uh, X and Y, and then Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, mm-hmm. and then it was Sun and Moon. Which then after that they got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Right. Um, and then we got Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, and then there was Sword and Shield. Yeah, they, I completely forgot that they didn't get a uh, like a third one or or anything like that. Yeah, there, uh, I wasn't aware of that until I was looking through these. Yeah, say because there, there was no Pokemon Z. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, even though there is a, there is actually in that game a Pokemon that starts with Z, which is yeah. Zygarde. Yep. Uh, the Dragon Ground type, which is a, a cast iron bitch and a half. <laughs> right. Um, cast no, because iron uh, Sword and bitch. Sword and Shield and the one the latest DLC released um, like the Mega Dungeon or something like that, where you can go and fight and capture every one of the legendary Pokemon that has ever existed. Which is nuts. Right, which is nuts, and Zygarde is in there. Um, <laughs> of course. His mechanic is that when his health drops to a certain percent, he, like, digivolves, for lack of a better term. Because Zygarde is like the cell po- it's like a, yeah. it's like the cell Pokemon. So, yep. like, it, it has different forms depending on, like, its cell structure. So, like, yeah. it, I think its base form is actually a dog. I, I think so, yeah. Fair like, if it has the, the minimum amount of cells in it, it's like a dog. Mm. Um, well, no, the maximum there, amount... there's one where it's just like, it's almost like a single cell thing. Uh, I, yeah, least, I, I vaguely remember that. <laughs> probably. But at its maximum form, it looks like a goddamn Digimon, where, <laughs> because it's like humanoid with like these wings and whatnot. But anyway, when you fight it, it's in like the snake form, which is like 50% cell structure or something mm-hmm. like that. You drop its health so far, and then it digivolves into that like humanoid form and gets triple its health. Oh my god. And you have to fight it again. You have to kill it again. I think my brother said he spent uh, out. I don't know how many hours, but hours yeah. trying to catch this. Oh thing. my god, that's nuts. Because the that dungeon, is, the the way that dungeon works is if if you beat it, like if you beat the Pokemon, it's a guaranteed catch. Okay. So like you know, you just have to beat it, and then you can then you can catch. You it. don't have but to get it down you, and then risk it. Right. Like you just have to. You have to just straight up murder it and then you can catch it so <laughs> that's one um, way to do it i guess yeah so you know i'm kind of interested to see where they're going with the the series oh, um yeah. the trading cards still still going strong still going yeah uh the, the you know they had a manga which is really actually a lot darker than the uh, yeah series. yeah it is actually i was kind of surprised with that when i when i read it back in the day well yeah because like giovanni's one of Giovanni's Pokemon, like, cuts up another? Like, it uses Slash and literally murders another Pokemon? Right. Well, I, th- I think like, the, the, cuts it in half? The newer manga now is more in line with the anime, so it's a lot more, yeah. like, lighthearted, things like that. Um, but, like, like fun fact, when they were when they were planning this, originally uh, Ash was going to have a Clefairy instead of a Pikachu. That was originally going to be the mascot of Pokemon, effectively. But people, for whatever reason, liked Pikachu more, so they, for the anime, transitioned to that. And that's why everybody loves the, uh, you know, Fat Yellow Mouse. Yep, and one of the, one of only, I want to say it's really one of only two Pokemon that has an actual uh, battle, like an actual voiced sound effect yep. in the game that isn't some kind of digitization. It, uh, it, it's it, that Eevee. Yep. yep. And it's because of the, yep. uh, the Let's Go games. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. so... Which I'm okay with. I'm, uh, I'm okay with Eevee. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm okay with Eevee too. I like I like Eevee. Um, my daughters have like Eevee plushies and yeah. like the, they have Eevee and then a few of the Evolution oh. plushies. So um, uh, my my youngest is particularly uh, fond of of Eevee. Yeah, so she's very she's that's, very that's happy. That's um, my daughter. She loves uh, well, she loves Eevee and she loves uh, Sylveon. Yeah. Yep. yep. I have a plushie. I have a Sil- they have a Sylveon plushie as well. Mm-hmm. Um. It's cute. It is. Uh, so then, um, one of the games that we haven't touched on, uh, Pokemon Go. Yeah, which, I mean, is still fairly well popular these days. Yeah, and it's a... I think it kind of sparked something in the world in, like, getting people to be more active and whatnot. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, this thing called the pandemic happened, and yeah. people couldn't go anywhere. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, but, I have well, Pokemon Go. I to, logged, to their credit, I logged... they reacted good to that and re- and started adding, like, more options for people who 
can't get out and you know it looks right. like most remote of us raid remote raid passes mm-hmm. daily you know they give you like a daily free pack which you know it's just a couple of items but it's enough yeah. i mean it's enough to dangle that carrot uh, yeah you know reducing like walking distances that are needed to for certain achievements and yep. stuff like that um yeah, I mean, I I still play the game. I log into it every day to to get my you know my. I haven't logged stuff. in like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> jerk. Um, I'll send you a gift next time I'm on. Yeah, I think I need to send you a gift actually. <laughs> oh, uh, see, that's why I haven't been on. I haven't gotten any gifts from you. It's your uh, fault. Okay. Probably. Well, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know because you have to log in in order to get to see that you have a gift. Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Pokemon Go, it's uh, it, it's still immensely popular. I think it uh, it helped bring um, Pokemon to another generation of people. You know, everyone's on a cell phone. Uh, to quote Bliz- you know, to quote the people at Blizzard, well, you have a cell phone, don't you? <laughs> um, well, I'm saying like Pokemon Go, like even people that had never played a Pokemon game before were playing yeah. that, which which just blew my mind that they had no interest in ever picking up a Pokemon game, but they were playing Pokemon Go. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I will say that I am uh, I am now uh, spoiled. Um, there is a uh, kids playground across the street from my house that they have since put a Pokestop in, and oh. so I literally can sit in bed and spin this Pokestop. <laughs> Lucky. So I I don't have to leave my house. To you literally don't have to now. I literally don't have to leave my house because it is. It is across this. This poker stop is across the street from my my house. Not like I'm, I I live in a neighborhood, folks. Like I'm not talking about like across like a, a major intersection or something. I'm talking about like across the road that, in my neighborhood that goes in front of my house. Oh, so. I was gonna say that, that's like what like 50 feet from your front yard, if that. Yeah, if that. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm a little I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> little bit, little bit, little bit. See, okay. uh, there, cl- closest that. one for me is I think like three blocks away. Yeah, yeah. If but I, but I pass I pass it every day on my way to and from work, so I, I really should safely yeah. park my car and get the Pokestop. Yeah, it's um, there's also a Pokemon gym at my daughter's preschool. So when I drop her off every day, I go there. I go there to make sure that I uh, I still own the gym. I own yeah. this preschool gym. Yep, I, I actually <laughs> saw an article on Kotaku the other day that uh, a, a Pokemon Go player uh, bragged online about. Uh, holding a a particular gym for, I want to say it was over thirteen hundred days. Oh wow! And then and as of course, what happens when you brag about stuff online? Yep. Um, to his credit, though, the person that went and stole the the gym from him was actually found to be cheating at the oh. game. Oh. So um, there's there's that. Yeah. But yeah, so be be careful about. Yeah. online bragging folks because yeah there's a lot of jerks out online <laughs> ain't that the truth right namely us um we're the so... fun kind of jerks though yes yes we are <laughs> um because everything is ripe for parody and we lampoon anything it's true even ourselves so, yeah especially ourselves Self, <laughs> self-deprecating humor it's what's for dinner it gets me through the day exactly that and a xanax <laughs> i have crippling depression <laughs> if, if you know that that uh that meme yes <laughs> i'm in danger oh ralph what are we gonna do with you uh, but oh yeah yeah i mean pokemon go uh, like you said it really did uh introduce pokemon to a, a whole lot of new people um i remember I, I was i was at gamestop still when that came out and like within a very short amount of time of that thing getting any kind of popularity all of our stores got in huge shipments of like mobile recharge batteries and battery packs and yeah. like Pokemon themed stuff. And like, like, all right, we want you to deck out the entire counter and Pokemon stuff because these people will buy all this stuff. We're like, okay, the people that are playing this game aren't coming in here to buy video ga- Pokemon games. They're not coming in here to buy Pokemon cards. They're not coming in here to buy plushies. They're coming in here for those battery packs and Google and Apple cards. That's what they're coming in for. No, no, no. Deck it out in Pokemon. People still came in to buy the battery packs and the cards to get in-game stuff. Like we told yeah. them. Yep. Well, didn't you have one of those uh, one of those little button clicker things that, like, you, you know, it would... Oh. You could hit the button and it would throw the, it would, like, throw the Pokeball in the game for you yes. or something like that? Um, 
the uh, unofficial uh, Pokemon Go because they had the uh, the Poke Watch or whatever it was called. Um, the thing that I had was from a third party company that effectively made the game think that when you went by a Pokestop, it was auto it, that you were actually tagging it, or if you encountered a Pokemon, it would just spam Pokeballs until the game finally registered that you caught one. Um, right. Drained your battery like you wouldn't believe and didn't work half the time. But, uh, no, I ended up uh, switching and using the, the official Pokemon one. Yeah. Um, there's a, where I live, there's a canal downtown, mm -hmm. uh, so, um, which is lined with Pokestops and oh, gyms bet. and everything else. And it's a, it's a couple of kilometers to do a lap around a, I, I think it's probably about four, four to five kilometers to do a lap yeah. um, from stem to stern around the canal That's so um when the weather's nice uh you know i used to take the kids down there pre-pandemic right and so i just walk along you know like any responsible adult not paying attention to my children <laughs> catching pokemon as face I'm buried in your phone <laughs> right my face buried in my phone um so no i mean it's a good way for people to get out and be active oh, absolutely um, you know e even if it promotes a little even just a little bit of more engagement and involvement in um and being an active person, and right. I'm all for it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then they followed it up with like, uh, what was it, Mario Run? Um, it was a it was a Mario game that was a mobile game, kind of like that, where it was like, I was unaware where... of that. Yeah, I, 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 there, there's I, a I, Minecraft I, one that was made by Microsoft. Uh, well, yeah, there's that one. Mario too. Run is just a runner game. No, it was uh, it was like based off of. Um, they did a Harry was, Potter one. Uh, yeah. It was also uh, Niantic. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I was gonna say, anyway, I, I do not remember a, a Mario Pokemon Go style game. I, All right, well, the, whatever. Well, there was um, there was Minecraft. Well, I mean, it was like a it was like a, a not really like a Pokemon like catching anything game. It was like a, a game to get you out and moving. Oh, um. I vaguely remember that, and I vaguely remember that they didn't really do anything with it. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think it's uh, actually gone anywhere. Yeah, but I mean, as far as like Pokemon Go style games, I mean, we we talked about Minecraft, which is either since shut down or shutting down soon. Uh, they did the Harry Potter one, as far as I know, is still going good. Uh, there was a Ghostbusters one, which I absolutely love. That one, um, surprise, that surprise, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, that one's shut down. Um, there was a Jurassic Park one, which. I heard about, and then that was literally all I ever heard about it. I don't know if it's still up. I don't know if anybody ever played it. I never checked it out. Never knew anybody that did. <laughs> mm. But, I mean, it, it, once again, it's, it circles back to what we talked about at the top of the show, which was other things have tried to emulate Pokemon and have never really had that amount of success. And I, I think that's, yeah. that's kind of the core tonight, is Pokemon something that obviously we're big fans of, and neither one of us think is going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, um... I'm, I'll be interested to see where they go, like I said, with the series. Um, mm. I think there was a lot of lessons learned that they got from Sword and Shield. Sword and oh, Shield yeah. definitely changed things yes, in the Pokemon absolutely. universe. Uh, and there were there were some things that were for for good, like mm. like we said, the open worldness. Um, you know, the the less random encounters, the mm. more you know, like you can actually see the Pokemon that you Wh run which into was Titan. nice. Yes, because you could try to avoid them when you were mm -hmm. trying to get through the area instead of yep. having to fight 8 million Zubats while you go through the oh cave. Oh, my God. Um, <sighs> cave herpes. There were some things that I didn't, that I personally didn't care about, like I said, the um, or the Gigantamax system. I just mm -hmm. thought it was, not to not, not to make a pun, overinflated. <laughs> um, well, it was, it was that series, it was that particular series gimmick, though. It, it was that particular series gimmick, but it, it took forever as far as the animation goes. Right. The battles were lengthy because of, you know, like the shielding system. And, yeah, true. You know, and having to wait for, you know, for your teammates. And the teammates were always, like, the AI teammates were just garbage. So you're talking not so much about Gigantamax in, in general, but more about the Gigantamax battles, like, on the field. Yeah. Okay, uh, you okay. Know, yeah, yeah, I'll, the, I'll agree the with you on that one. Yeah, like the Raid Den type thing. Yeah. Or, you know, you know the... Uh, they were just like, and like I said, the the teammates were hot garbage. I know I'm I'm talking about you, Martin, and your stupid soul rock that all it does is cosmic power. <laughs> right. Um, actually attack you piece of crap. <laughs> um, 
But it's just like it was. It just took forever, and that was the only way to really get the good Pokemon. So you're right. just like, ah, oh, come on. So I mean, unless you had a team of other players that you actually knew joining you that were capable, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. Yeah, that. it was just, and the I didn't particularly care for like the trading system either because it was like you could either do what amounted to like a wonder trade where it's like you trade, you want to trade a specific Pokemon, but it randomly matched you with people. Right. See, no, I, so I thought, I thought you had was, to, I thought that like, was kind of cool it, personally. It, well, so there was, there was the surprise trade, which surprise was literally, yeah. which was literally you, you yeet a Pokemon out there and then you get whatever you get. See, that, okay. That's the one I liked more. Cause it was, it was neat going, all right, well, I figured at first everybody's just gonna be throwing garbage Pokemon out there and waiting for somebody to be nice and throw out a legendary. But like the very first time I did it, I threw out like a super common Pokemon and got like one of the rare like end game ones. Not a legendary, but one that was like really hard to get. And I'm like, oh, okay, people are actually doing this. So I started giving, you know, more not necessarily like super rare ones, but ones that were harder to catch or ones that you had to meet like very specific requirements to even find it in the wild. And it seems like for the most part that's kind of what players were doing is putting out stuff to kind of help the community. I mean, every so often you'd get, you know, five magic carps in a row, but well, the surprise trade for me, I think the, I, I mean, that's basically all I did. Cause yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't giving out like ultra super rare or legendary yeah. Pokemon. I was, you know, giving out something harder to, to get, or my breeder trash, which right. is basically, you know, <laughs> well, you the, get an egg, you well, get an egg, it's not a shiny, you get rid of it. You get I, an egg, it's not a shiny, you get rid of it. I, I made sure to get all three starters and just kept breeding them, and I would just keep throwing out the starters for people. Because that's one of the hardest things to do is to get all three starters. So I was throwing those out there, just, you know, making it easier for people to get those starters if they wanted all three, you know? Right. Um, for me, I, when I played, anyway, the the surprise trade market was just absolutely infested with Dreepies. <laughs> Right. Which is the dragon ghost Pokemon. Hmm. Um, Which that, that's one of the cooler ones. Don't get me wrong. It, it is one of the, tr it is one of the cooler ones. Um, it just takes forever to evolve and it doesn't oh actually God, yes. learn any new moves until it evolves. Which, which is kind of weird, but I, I loved its evolutionary line though. <laughs> no, it had a good evolutionary line. It's actually, I think one of the fastest, if not the fastest Pokemon in it's, the game. It's like, up there. It's yeah. an insanely fast Pokemon. It's kind of a glass cannon type thing. Though, it it like. really is though. But I mean, you know me, I'm a fan of those. <laughs> right. So, you know, it was just like infested with those things. So I was like, Oh God damn it. I just got another dreepy. <laughs> um, so I would just, you know, wind up tossing the dreepy back out into the wild. So I was just, you know, I was contributing to the problem. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, the then the the regular trading system was um, not really. I, I didn't think it was that great either. It's mm. just because it was uh, you you picked a Pokemon to trade, mm. and then someone would match with you, and they would decide if they wanted it or not. Right. And like you could reject the Pokemon they wanted to offer you as well. But it was just a random match. Like you couldn't like you didn't see what the person was trading beforehand. So it was like. It was almost like a waste of time. Right. Um, whereas in some of the prior games, they had like the global trade system, which was like... I w I'm deposit... offering this. I want this. Right. Yeah. Like, I want this Pokemon. You know, or you'd be like, here is what I'm offering. This is what I would like. And then someone could either choose or reject it. Or, you know, you could go out there and be like, all right, I want this Pokemon and see what other people are asking for that Pokemon. Right. Um, Do I have so... anything they, that anybody else wants for it? Right, exactly. So, um, but yeah, so you know, we've, there's probably a lot more about Pokemon that we yeah. could go into. Uh, maybe we'll do another follow up episode when uh, Legends, uh, after Legends comes out. Um, we I can, can see that. We can continue. Um, it'll probably come up again when we talk anime oh, or yeah. uh, video games or, uh, you know, annoying electric rats, whatever, <laughs> you know. Whatever it is, I'm sure it will it will come up. Oh yeah, probably not as often as UA Bowl, but it will come up. <laughs> yeah, that, dang, that's a UA Bowl counter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we've been we've been missing out on that one the last few episodes, folks. We're really sorry about that. Uh, we dropped the ball. We, um, we will try to do better at that in the future. We, we know uh, that you all come here for your quality UA, UA Bowl content. We apologize. Yes. yes. Well, this is about the only place that you can get quality content about UA Bowl. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Certainly not as films. <laughs> Hey-oh! Uh, all right, so, um... 
yeah, I, Pokemon. That we covered a lot. We I, did, I, yeah. I, I think we should probably allow folks to stop hearing us rant about the, the electric rat and get out there and catch them all. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I think that'll probably do it for tonight for us tonight, folks. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, just like we said before, um, there's many things that have that have tried to uh, tried to emulate it, but um, let's just all remember, guys, that Pokemon is forever. I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> That's been a twenty plus year running joke, folks, and I still hate him. <laughs> Uh, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. If Ian doesn't show up next week, I was here the whole time. Good night, everybody!